Worship Ministries mission statement. Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries seeks to become a global voice along a lifelong journey of spiritual and economic hope, encouragement, and empowerment to people locally, nationally, and around the world. Good morning, good morning, Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries, family, friends, and guests. I am Sister Carla Jones, and I am so glad that you joined us today. I want you to like and share, like and share. Let's not be stingy with the Word of God. Let's make sure that everyone we know sees and hears about all the amazing things that Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries are doing through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I want you to do three things. Be open to the Word of God. Be real. If Apostle says something that knocks your socks off, say something in the comment section. We want to see the comment section go crazy with hearts and thumbs up, emojis, or whatever the Lord puts in your spirit to comment. Do it in the section as the Spirit of God is moving on your behalf. So I'm excited about what the Lord has to say to our hearts. Let's get into the praise and worship, which is already taking place on our behalf. God bless you all. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries. Thank you all for tuning in with us this morning. This morning, I will be reading from Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2. And it reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Thank you all for tuning in with us this morning. Please return next Sunday, and God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Can you say thank you this morning? My brothers and sisters, can you say thank you, Jesus? Can you say, Lord, thank you, Jesus? Good morning, my brothers and sisters. My name is Terry Allen. Welcome to the anointed Praise and Worship Ministries Virtual Celebration. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And let's take our prayers to the Lord with faith and belief and know that your circumstances will be changed in the name of Jesus. Bow your head, close your eyes, prepare your hearts. Let's go in to the throne of the Lord thy God, whom I call the Christ. My Heavenly Father, there are things that we have been waiting for. Prayers that have been sent up to heaven, but haven't been answered yet. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask for those prayers to be answered right now in the name of Jesus. On knees, set cloth on, ashes on head, we repent, we repent, we repent for our sins. Father God, heal our homes, heal our families, heal the hurt, heal the brokenhearted in the name of Jesus. Put the faith back into the fire so that it can merge and be can become one and stand still and know that you are God and that there's nothing impossible with you. My Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus. My Heavenly Father, we, we ask you right now to come into our hearts 
and love on us, Father God, like it used to love on us when we were in our right minds. When we had, when we were sold out, when we were sold out for you, Lord. Bring us back into your presence so that we can be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. So that our families can be saved and our homes healed. Prosperity can come forth and flourish into our homes and our hearts on our jobs. Father God, we thank you, Jesus, for blessings. Father God, we know, Lord, that you are a miracle worker. Bring me one more miracle, Lord. Can you say that, my brothers and sisters? Bring me one more miracle, and I promise you, I will show you how I can bring it to you back hundredfold, full of harvest for the kingdom of heaven so that souls can be saved in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Bring me that one miracle, Lord, and I will do everything I can to edify your spirit so that I can say that I am a good servant, a good steward with the talent that you gave me, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, I give all of my situations to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. Everything I've been praying for, Lord, is going to come to pass right now. And it is done. It is done. My brothers and sisters say, it's done. I prayed it. I believed it. Now I receive it. It's done. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Speak those things as though they already exist. Speak those things into existence. Prophesy over yourself. Prophesy over your children. Prophesy over your families. Prophesy over your jobs. Everything that you need. Bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the Lord. And let the Lord come down. Mold your heart. And bring you back into the fold. In the name of Jesus. God has not forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten your family. He hasn't forgotten your son or daughter or your mother or father. He hasn't forgotten you. But you've forgotten him. But if you just come back, get on thy knees and repent for your sins and know that God is God. He can make it right. He can make it right. Come forth and come home. For it is done in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray over the leadership right now, Lord, that Dr. Clay and Bishop will bring the word in the ministry and bring in the praise and worship. So that you can know that God is God. And he will give that fresh word through the ministry in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
2020, we're going deeper in the locker room where foundational teaching takes place. God has been using our executive pastor, Dr. Kimberly Clay, in many ways, you all. You all know she has brought our talented. Amen. And God has truly been blessing us, amen, in our locker room. Starting this Tuesday, December the 1st, we're going deeper in the biblical forms of Praise y'all. This is my bro. I have never even thought that praise and worship would go this deep. But God has taken us deeper and deeper. So I need for you all to contact your family members, your friends, and say, tune in on Facebook Live, December the 1st, 2020, at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time as we go deeper. Amen. And we're going to learn the biblical forms of praise. Also starting in December on December the 6th. Can somebody say, say December the 6th? Sunday, December the 6th, 2020, we are beginning a new series. Uh, every month, God has been blessing us to teach on various series. And this month, we're closing out. Amen. We crown me. Amen. It has truly been a blessing. The five crowns of salvation. Starting next Sunday, next Sunday, September, I mean, December the 6th, 2020, our new series is entitled, Make Room for Ministry. Oh, my God. Make Room for Ministry. We are expecting God to just take us to an entirely different level. So make sure your alarm clocks are set to be in service with us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., Central Standard Time. And last but not least, listen, you all. As you see in the comment section, we always say, please like and share this broadcast and put hashtag share. The reason why we're asking you to do that because for one, we are evangelizing the world. And every time you share the broadcast, you are evangelizing. It's just like knocking on doors or passing out flyers or hanging flyers. We are evangelizing. And secondly, we like to be a blessing to the person who has 
the most share. So at the end of the month, we tally up the individuals who shared the video the most time. Amen. And we send you a gift from our heart. We, know, we, we just want to be a blessing to you. We just want to be a blessing to your home, a blessing to your ministry. So make sure every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time that you share the broadcast. We love you. God bless you. We're about to get back into the service. But if you haven't spoken, make sure you say hello. We love you and we see you later. Good morning. Welcome to APWM Worship Celebration on this glorious Sunday morning. I am Sister Carmisha Spencer and it is time to give. It is time to give unto the kingdom of God. Our very best and nothing less. Our best fruit. Here are several ways you can give on this morning. Cash app, dollar sign, AP, WM Conway, Givelify at Anointed Praise and Worship, online at www.apwmworldwide.org, or by phone, 870-727-0061. Please leave your name, your number, the amount that you desire to give, and a representative will give you a call back. Again, several ways you can give on this morning. Cash app, dollar sign, AP, WM, Conway, Givelify at Anointed Praise and Worship, online at www.apwmworldwide.org, or by phone, 870-727-0061. Please leave your name, your number, the amount that you desire to give, and a representative will give you a call back. If you will, stretch your right hand and repeat after me. In faith I give, in faith I receive, it will return unto me and supply all of my needs in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And amen. I pray that each of you named your seed and you are expecting a grand harvest. May the Lord bless your seed richly. God bless each of you.
give the honor in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your guidance, your teaching. Lord, move me out of the way yes. that the people can hear and see you and not me. God, I thank you and praise you for working through your word. Let the word do the work on today. We praise you in Jesus' name. Every heart say amen. to come before the people of God once again. I never take it for granted. I don't take it lightly, but I ask God to use me and give me something to say before I stand before the people of God. Yes. I honor God for each of you, our APWM family, uh, friends, guests, associates. I honor God for each of you on today. All of the children of God on this morning. We are praying for a word, and I believe that God has dropped something in my spirit for us on this morning. So let us be in tune with what the Spirit is saying to the church. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 through 27. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 through 27. You all who are already acquainted with APWM, you know we stand in honor of the word of the Lord. So if you are would in obedience to stand with us to honor God's word, the words of our Lord, Jesus the Christ. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, before we read our scripture, would you hold your Bible, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever it is that you're reading the scriptures from. And we're going to declare into our atmosphere. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. This is my weapon. This is my weapon. This is my life. This is my life. I am, I am what it says I am. What it says I am. I can do, I can do what it says I can do. What it says I can do. I can have, I can have what it says I can have. What it says I can have. According to my faith. According to my faith. It is so. It is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians nine twenty four through twenty seven. Let's read it together. Know ye not that they which run a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The word of the Lord is already blessed. And we're going to bring ourselves under the conviction and the obedience of the word of God. We've been on this series, The Crowns of Salvation for this entire month and if I tell you it has been an amazing and complete blessing just in my life so I'm sure that it's blessing you all's life as well yes. today we're going to talk about the incorruptible crown or the crown that won't fade the imperishable crown the incorruptible crown if I may on today I wanted to use the subtopic Giving it the best that I've got. Right, yeah. Giving it the best mm -hmm. that I've got. This incorruptible crown is also called the imperishable crown. This crown is given to believers who faithfully run the race. Mm -hmm. Who crucify every selfish desire 
in the flesh and point men to Jesus. God calls some people to do some things that require much sacrifice in the way that they live and conduct their lives. This verse also implies that these people will also receive this crown for the sacrifices that they were willing to make for God to successfully complete the call and mission that he has for us to do. Uh -huh. Basically, run whatever race that God has set out for you and be the best that you can be for God. Be willing to make whatever sacrifices that there may be in order to successfully complete that mission that he set out for us. So God has called us all to do something. We are all running a race. We are all fighting a fight. Mm -hmm. And we're all striving for the incorruptible crown. And we're giving it the best that we've got. I want to share with us in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, our main passage of scripture from today. I want to share from the message translation so you can follow along from whatever translation that you're reading from. It says, you've all been to the stadium and seen athletes race. Everyone runs. One wins. Run to win. All good athletes train hard. They do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You're after one, though. That's gold eternally. Wow. Verses 26 and 27 says, I don't know about you, but I am running hard for the finish line. Yes. I'm giving it everything that I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. Yes. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else about it, and then missing out myself. Yes. We are not running or doing something to be saved that has been already taken care of in the sacrifice of Jesus and the shedding of his blood. When we accept the Lord into our hearts and we turn away from sin, that 180 degree turn, 180 degree turn, not a 360. A 360, I hear people say it all the time, but that's a complete circle. Uh -huh. Meaning I start right back where I, I start, I start where I started. Mm -hmm. I made a circle. I start here. I come around and I'm back in the same place. No, we don't want to do that, but we want to make a 180, a straight line turn. And we want to go the opposite way that we've come. When we're not running uh, or doing something to be saved, what are we doing? Are we wasting time? Are we running in circles? Are we doing 360s? But we want to make that 180 degree turn. When we accept the Lord in our hearts and turn from sin, we are then saved. We are then saved when we turn from sin. We are not continuing sin. But we turn from our sins. Then at that point we are saved. We are to run for the incorruptible crown. That recognizes our true service. Our real service for God. Not the service that we do when we are in front of the pastor. Or around the members of the saints of God. The brothers and sisters. But the service out into the highways and the hedges. When we're out at Walmart or out in, at the Shell gas station, compelling men and women to come to Jesus. We are to run for the incorruptible crown that recognizes our true service. All Christians are in the race to serve him. All Christians, not just the pastor or the ministers or those with titles, but all Christians yes. have been called in the race to serve the Lord. We are all pursuing a prize. The question does remain whether all of us are using the tools that are provided through the training and guidance of the Holy Spirit through our leaders. We've been provided with some amazing tools 
that we have been given through the Holy Spirit, through the leaders. Yes. Just like our Sunday morning worship celebration as we teach and rightly divide the word of God. We break down the word of God. Even on our Tuesday night locker room where foundational teaching takes place on Facebook Live at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. These are tools yes. that we are to use. On Thursday nights, our APWM Bible Institute, where we're learning the 21 attributes of God, yes. learning him so that we can serve him. These are tools that we've been given. But I have one question for us today. Are we actually using the tool or are we just you looking at it and saying, oh, tool, you are so shiny and beautiful and I really like your colors and your shape, or are we using the tool? Are we going to pick it up and make it make an impact as a device in our lives? Yes, yes. So we need the training to be able to run effectively in this race. Our goal is to be victorious, victorious. in the race yes. and not to leave anything out mm -hmm. of our efforts. Our training it is a strict training. It's a struggle sometimes, and sometimes it can be agonizing and painful. But guess what? God's grace nonetheless surpasses all discomfort and pain that we as Christians may experience. We are to train in order to contend with the adversaries or the enemies and be prepared to fight. Yes. The opposition wants to keep you from living in righteousness, from living in holiness, uh -huh. from living prepared before God. Yeah. Opposition meaning the contender, the defense, the devil. Uh -huh. Anyone being used by the devil is our opposition. But guess what, family? The opposition is not our team. The opposition is not those who are our true friends. Somebody say true friends. You know, the ones you can yeah, count on, 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 your, on your hand right there on the fingertips. Mm -hmm. um, those who strive for the same goal, those are not the opposition. Somebody said that's not the opposition. Not the opposition. I want to make it clear to us this morning. We are to live under self-control. Yes. Yeah. And govern ourselves. Govern ourselves. Y'all hear it on that and after the announcements and govern yourselves accordingly. We are to govern ourselves according to the word of God. We are to govern ourselves according to the instruction and the tools that we have had placed in our hands. Mm -hmm. This is to bring our training into action to resist opposition while learning to love God more. And more while keeping his commands. I want to say that again. We use all our tools. We find out who the opposition is so that we bring our training into action. See, training is no good until it's brought into action. If, if, if I'm in the army and, and I'm being trained, from the time that we step into the military, we're being trained to fight. We're being trained to go out into battle. Uh -huh. But the training is of no use if we never are able to use it. We bring it into action. So we resist the opposition. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. And learning to love God more. So as we resist it, we are loving God more. The Bible says to submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And that's the order that we are to do it in. We are to submit ourselves to God, learn more about him, allow him to learn us, have a real, real developed relationship with our God. Yes, yes. To learn more about him while keeping his commands. So we're fighting off the opposition. The closer we get to the Lord, the better we are able to fight. The faster we are able to run. For athletes, it's necessary to abstain from unwholesome food. You know, junk food, sugary stuff, heavy food, wine, sexual indulgences. This all stands in the way of winning the crown. 
Paul states in 1 Corinthians 9 and 25, to observe the world, it runs for a crown that fades away. So we're doing all this training. Athletes, we're coming under the strict, strictest of conditions uh -huh. for our flesh, for our body, all to get a, a crown or a medal that fades away. It's not even eternal gold. It's not even gold that lasts forever, but just for the idea of having a crown. But we're striving uh -huh. for a crown that will never fade. That's that incorruptible crown. Somebody say, I'm giving it the best that I've I'm got. I'm giving it the best that I've got. The thing is, we don't want to just go through life. We don't want to go through and just make a, a pitiful attempt at living for God. But we want to give him the best that we've got. We want to pour our hearts and pour ourselves into living for him, into pointing others to him, into building up the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. I want to share with us three points today, three requirements in running the race, and then I'm going to get out of the way. Three requirements uh -huh. for running this race. Three, one, two, three requirements for running this race. We must be number one. Pure in body. Somebody say pure in body. Pure in body. Pure, meaning not contaminated, meaning authentic, natural, transparent, or true. Pure in body. Romans 7 and 23 says, but I see a different law in the parts of my body. Waging war against the law of my mind and taking me prisoner to the law of sin in the parts of my body. So number one, we are to be pure in body. We are to not contaminate ourselves with things that can have an effect on our bodies and then trickle into our minds. Because mm -hmm. whatever we put into our bodies, it affects all of our systems. All of yes. our organs, yes. everything that concerns us, it has to do with what we put in our bodies. That's good. That's good. Even down to the food, down to the granules of food, how much sugar, how much starch we put into our bodies. This can affect the race that we run. Uh -huh. So we're giving it the best that we got and we cannot do it without, number one, being pure in body. The second point that I want to leave with us today that we must be in, in a requirement for this race is sober of mind. Somebody say sober of mind. Sober of mind. Sober, sober, meaning restrained, serious, controlled, and steady. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think sober is only con con uh, uh, related to or contributed to when we're talking about drinking or using drugs. Yes! To be away from other substances is to be sober. But we could be uh, on, on no uh, substances and still not be sober in yeah. mind. Yeah. Still not be focused. Somebody may say, well, I don't have a drinking or a drug problem. We could still not be sober in uh -huh. mind. So we can still not be restrained, still not be serious about what God has called us to do. We could not be controlled or steady in the things of God. Right. First Peter said, uh, First Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober minded. Uh -huh. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Someone says sober minded. Sober minded. sober minded. That's number two. So we have pure in body. We have number two, sober of mind. And number three, the last thing that I want us to realize that is a requirement of this race is willingness to endure. Number three, I have to be willing to endure. The word willing, it means inclined or pleased, mm -hmm. prepared, mm -hmm. happy, or responsible. Let me say that again. Willing to endure. The word willing, being inclined or pleased, 
being prepared, happy, or even responsible. Mm -hmm. Many of us are not pleased to do basically much of anything. Mm -hmm. We're not pleased to do good, and we're not pleased to even do bad. We don't know if we want to live for the Lord or if we want to live for the devil. It seems as though in some of our spirits something is always wrong. But are we willing to endure? Are we willing to hold out? Are we willing to hang in there? Are we willing to stop complaining and to start running yeah. the race? If I stand at the start and the gun has already gone off to start running, but I'm still at the starting line, how will I ever complete the task? How will I ever yeah, run yeah. the race? How will I ever complete? How will I win? If I never get started, a person who's willing to endure makes no excuses. A person who is willing to endure is pleased and happy to go about the necessary training to get to where they need to be. Uh -huh. So today I'm going to ask us, are we willing to endure? Where where our tough subtopic is giving it the best that we've got. We cannot give it the best that we've got if we're not willing to endure. Uh -huh. So number one, we've got to be pure in body. Number two, sober of mind. Uh -huh. And three, willing to endure. Somebody ask yourself, am I willing to endure? Will I put those old things behind me? Will I put what I personally desire on the shelf to fulfill my purpose in God? Everything that God has placed in us, every gift, every calling, it's there yeah. so that his will can be done. And might I tell you that the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow to it. That's the word. So everything that God sends, every piece of, of training, every piece of equipment, every tool that he sent, there is blessings that come with our obedience. When we're obedient to God, the blessings come with it. So many times we're chasing blessings, but we don't have to chase the blessings if we chase the blesser. If we chase God, he holds the favor and the blessing in his hand. Are we willing to endure? Matthew 24 and 13 says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Let me say that again. Matthew 24 and 13 says, but the one mm -hmm. who endures to the end will be saved. Yes. Another reference scripture. Thank you, Sister High. So 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18 says, for our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. Uh -huh. So we do not focus on what is seen but on what is unseen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For what is seen is temporary yes, it is. but what is unseen is eternal. Yes. Our works will follow us brothers and sisters. They have an eternal lasting value on our lives. We serve or we strive for a crown that will last forever. That incorruptible crown that nothing, nothing can harm. That will last forever and will not fade. As a result, we don't run aimlessly, but to please God. We don't run around in circles. We don't just sit and watch the beautiful tool, but we use it so that we may please God. Yes. Somebody say it and get that in your spirit. I'm giving it the best that I've got. I'm giving it the best that I've got. Amen. Thank you, sir. All of this is done while we face a raging war from within. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, for our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, uh -huh. against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. Do not allow yourself to be distracted with things that take you all focused from running the prize. It doesn't matter if it's mother, father, sister, brother, child, it does not matter. Don't allow anything 
anything to separate us from the love of God. Because in our obedience to God, he works out all of our life situations. So we don't have to focus on the situation. If we focus on God, he will always bring forth the answer. He will always bring forth relief in our lives. 1 Timothy 4 and 7. I'm giving plenty of scripture on today to back up the race for this crown. But have nothing to do with irreverent and silly myths. Mm -hmm. Rather, train yourself in godliness. Somebody say, train yourself train in, godliness. Yourself in godliness. godliness. That's it. Your eyes are to remain fixed on Jesus. Not on the problem, not on the situation that's going on, but our eyes are to remain fixed on Jesus. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. In the King James, it says the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that lay before him endured the cross and despised the shame and has sat down at the right hand of God's throne. Jesus was our perfect example. Yes. Many times we are talking about, oh, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to stick out. I don't want people looking at me and saying this and saying that. Well, Jesus was the source and perfecter of our faith. He was the one who walked the earth before us to show us how to live holy, to show us how to live right, to show us how uh -huh. to endure the pain and the struggles that may come into our life. So listen, we train the body to be controlled by our mind. Listen, did you hear that? We train the body, uh -huh. this big body, to be controlled by the mind through self-denial and self-discipline. That means sometimes I'm going to have to tell myself no. Sometimes I'm going to have to tell my body no. Uh -huh. No, you cannot have the rest of that pecan pie. No, you cannot eat some of that pound cake, but no, there has to be a self-discipline that comes in the way. No, you cannot respond. You cannot curse her out. Uh -huh. No, you cannot do it. Amen, amen. Because we have to be self-disciplined and self control. Mm -hmm. Somebody say I'm giving it the best, I'm that, I've the got. best that I've got. That's it. I will not come against God's word, but I will give this life my best. I'm giving it the best that I've got. Yes, Somebody yes. go ahead and say that this morning. I'm giving it the best that I've got. Yes, Lord. I'm giving it all that I have. Yeah. 
self-control. I need to get flesh in order. Yes. I've got to get this flesh yes. under submission. Against such, there is no law. According to the word of God, we need love. Yes. We need joy. We need peace. We need patience. We need kindness. We need goodness. We need faith. Yes. We need gentleness. We need self-control. Yes. Against such things, there is no law. There's nothing wrong with love. Yes.
and to the heavenlies with you, God, we don't want to just live in the flesh. But God, we thank you. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word on today. Thank you for who you've made us, oh God. I want to pray with us on today. I want to pray for us. I want to pray with us. I want to pray over us. That the Lord will increase our faith. That the Lord will build up our self-esteem. That the Lord will make us who we've been called to be. In our heavenly language, we, we speak the word of God. We, we communicate with him in a method where the enemy cannot understand. But on today, we're just going to bask in the music and we're going to uh, we're going to talk to the Lord on today. God has called us to do some amazing things in him. Believe it or not, you are worthy of everything that God has put on the inside of you. Yes, yes. You are worthy of every gift that he's placed on the inside of you. Yes, Lord. This fire is not small beginnings. Although you may feel like you've just got an inkling of what you should have to do what you need to do, use that. It represents that faith as of a grain of mustard seed. Yes, Lord. It represents the small beginning of anything great that starts. Everything starts with the seed. Am I right about it, Pastor? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Everything starts with the seed. Everything grows from a seed. So if we start it small, we can grow that thing. It will be watered and God himself shall give us the increase. So let's pray today. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. Yes, Lord. We thank you for who they represent in the kingdom. The weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you for our gifts. We thank you for our callings. We thank you for your word yes. that we hid in our hearts that we may not sin against you. God, we thank you that your word is that lamp unto our feet. Your word, your word. And your word is that light yes, unto our path. God, we praise you that because of your word, we're going to give it the best that we can. Yes, Lord. God, a lot more of us could do a lot better. But God, we haven't called ourselves under control. We haven't brought our flesh under submission. Uh -huh. So today, 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 by the power of the blood of Jesus, yes, Lord. I speak that that stronghold of addiction yes. is broken. Okay. In the lives of God's people, yes, Lord. whatever the addiction is that keeps us from coming under submission, that keeps us from coming into obedience yes. with God's word, it is broken. Broken. Every witch, every warlock that has spoken over us, it is broken. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Right now, right now. You are cast back down into the pits of hell. Yes. From which you came, there is no power that no you power. have over us, no over power. our lives, no over power. our minds, no that we cannot bring ourselves under the submission of God. Amen. God, today we choose to be obedient to your word. Lord, we choose to not procrastinate any longer. Yes, Lord. Somebody is saying right now, God, I, I, I'm not giving it the best that I've got. But today, in order to receive that crown, today, the today. crowns of salvation, God, I want the crown. I want the crown. God, I want the crown. Yeah. Everything that's coming to me, I want. I want it. So, God, right now, I speak that I have strength. strength. I speak that I have strength. Strength, Lord. Strength. Yes, Lord. Strength through yes, you. Lord. I walk in. Yes, Lord. I'm in your hands. I'm in your hands. I'm God. covered by the blood of Jesus. With power, with power. Satan has no power in my life. No no you got to say it. Satan has no power in my life. Satan has no power in my life. I'm gonna give it all. 
Lord, we just speak over your people. That every addiction is broken. Every chain is broken. Yes, Lord. We are delivered. We are, delivered. We are healed. We are healed. We are set free and yes, we are made whole. In the name of Jesus. From this day forward. This day forward. God, we're going to give it the best that we can. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray together and we say amen. Amen. If there's someone watching on today, and you say, I need to be covered. I want to be covered. Give our office a call, 870-727-0061. Pastor and I are waiting for your call. We're waiting to pray with you. Yeah. We're waiting to help you. We'll walk with you. We'll walk with you to get to where you need to be. Yes, Lord. God is waiting. He's waiting. He loves you. Yes, he does. He adores you. Yes, he does. But we've got to give it the best that we've got. Yes. God bless you, family. May God.